Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl Wisdom, and you're listening to my NH Book Cruise of Wisdom. And uh, we have been talking about trades, like where they're going to go. We did carrot. We did price. We did uh, Giroux. We just did Giroux, Chikrin, Garland, Sherratt, all the players that are rumored to be traded. We've been doing trades to five different teams. And today, we're going to talk about a trade that actually happened and one that we actually did. We did a Toffoli trade to five different teams. And the number one team we figured he would go to, guess what? He went to. The Calgary Flames. Now, when I did that, uh, that was about a month ago I did that uh, trade video. You might want to check it out. Uh, we had him, them getting back a little, I think a little more than they did. And we're going to take a look at maybe why he, they didn't, Montreal didn't get back as much as I think they could have. Um, there's a lot of reasons for it. I'm going to take a look at it. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is an article by Mr. Engels, one of the great writers for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, and we're going to start off looking at a quote that he gave. And then we're going to go up to the top and we're going to look at the trade itself. And we'll kind of dissect it. Um, it's kind of odd. I think it's still a good trade for the Montreal Canadiens for several reasons. Not necessarily the reason for what they got back. Sometimes getting a little less value back has more value if you can actually, if you can see it that way. We'll see if you can see it that way as I go through it. So let's take a look at this trade and what the quote that I want you to look at here. There you go. Okay, so it says, okay, I talked to a lot of guy, a lot of the guys. I honestly, I think honestly, I know at least ten guys on the team. I'm familiar with Daryl as well. Daryl coached him. I'm so excited to be there. Everyone keeps saying it's a great fit, but I want to go there and prove that I'm worth what the trade was, and I'm going there, and I want to win. Great thing by Toffoli to say. But here's the big thing. There is like 10 guys on the team. We'll kind of go over that when we look at the trade itself for the Calgary Flames. Um, so let's look at the trade itself, the trade on the top here. Uh, Mr. Ingalls put it out there. Okay, Eric Ingalls, yes. The trade was the Montreal Canadiens traded Tyler Toffoli to the Calgary Flames for a 2022 top 10 protected first round pick, like they're ever going to see the top 10 on that. Unsigned prospect Emil Heinemann. Remember, he's unsigned. That's an interesting factor. He's 20 years old and he hasn't been signed by Calgary yet, which is kind of odd since they drafted him. We'll take a look at Heinemann. And a 2023 fifth rounder, right winger Tyler Pitlick. And it has a potential to be a good deal for both teams. Sure, it always does. You never know what that first round pick is going to be. Now, when I did this deal, uh, when I did this deal, on my video, uh, let's take a look at it. I'll tell, I'll show you what I had in the deal at the time a month ago when I had Toffoli going to Calgary. As it stands, Tyler Toffoli, they have him fitting here on the right side, maybe trying him with Monaghan, trying to boost Monaghan up a bit. That's a two uh, big-time shooters. Well, Sean Monaghan used to be, but shoot first, guys. Monaghan has kind of tried to be, become more of a playmaker since he was uh, since he's kind of he hurt his wrist, and it doesn't look like it's coming back very well. He has become more of a two way guy. I'm not so sure he's going to fit in there, but I'm not going to. I don't know if that was Sutter's idea, 
cat friendly just has them there or whatever i don't know i i would think coleman would come down here and defoe would play with backflin and mangiapani my gosh talk about shooters but it fits perfect for for in that in that lineup now when i did the video also we had colorado as part of the deal uh, pl a place they could go to LA, the New York Rangers, and Philadelphia. When I made the deal, I had uh, Dylan Dubé, a first round pick, and a solid, a little more solid of a prospect than the one that they offered up. Probably something like, you know, Pet Peterson um, or Jacob Pelche or something like that. And the reason why is if you look at Tyler Toffoli, uh, uh, his numbers, the guy's a proven 30, he scored 30 goals once. He's, he was on pace to get almost 40 in 2021. Um, he's at least a 25 goal scorer. And doesn't really put up a lot of points, but those players are really hard to find. Um, they don't just come up on your lap. And not to mention, if you look at his contract, it's even nicer. You know, a cap hit of $4.2 million for the next three years for a guy who is only 29 years old. He's not signed up for a really long time. I would have thought that there would have been a lot of people in on this. And I, and I think maybe there might have been a lot of people in on this. So why would Montreal then make a trade where, let's look at the trade, a first round pick, a late first round pick, if you look at this here, oh, where is it, here we go, uh, let's look at Tankathon, right now, they would be sitting at 29th in the league with that pick from Calgary, 29 overall. In the first round, not a super, not known to be a super huge, uh, deep draft either. And more than likely, Calgary is not going to be going the direction this way with that trade. They're probably going to get better. So, um, it's a late first round pick. First round picks are important. They can hit on them, no doubt about that. But there was teams out there that I believe could have offered a better first round pick like the LA Kings who desperately need scoring. Now they could have been in a position where they were saying, I don't know if we want where we're there yet. So maybe not a good idea to give up a first round pick for the Calgary flames. I think they're sort of in that position as well. I don't know if getting Tyler to Foley really makes them a contender compared to Colorado avalanche, who was the other team that could be in on that. And I think Colorado could have offered even something better than this. Now look at this, the prospect. Emil Heinemann. Again, unsigned at 20 years old. Was drafted in 2020. This is now two years later in 2022. He has had his last season was a that this last season is 11 goals, five assists and 16 points playing against men is not bad. 20 penalty minutes. That's really good for a Swedish player. I hate to say that, but it shows he's got a lot of spunk. These kind of numbers for a Swedish player at about this level kind of sizes up to be like a third line winger in the NHL. Possibly we'll see. Those aren't stupendous numbers. But they're not bad. Um, and it's a second round pick. The first round pick could be a bust. Tyler Pitlick is just a throw in and a fifth. Okay. Um, I thought they were going to be able to get, at the time, I thought they could get Dylan Dubé. Uh, that's what it was. Valamaki and a first. Something of that nature. Guys that are more ready to play right now. I would have thought that deal was better. 
Um, maybe they didn't think that deal was better. They might have had a big, big crush on this Emil guy that I don't know of too many people that knew. It seems to me like they took they gave, they took back a little less than they could have. If you went to Colorado, Colorado was in on this, and I kind of think that they probably were. Uh, Tyler Toffoli with Kadri and Barakowski, um, they could have sent back. They've got players that JT Comper that hasn't been knocking it out of the park for them. They could have put him in there. Uh, they've got great prospects that they could have put in there, like Martin Kaut or Sampo Ranta, their first-round pick. If they wanted to, they could have got in for this guy and um, made the cap work with somebody like JT Comper, it would have probably made it so it was pretty close for them to fill their cap. And honestly, I think that's a better deal. I, uh, I have a hard time believing that LA and Colorado didn't look at this and go, I think we can beat this deal. There had to be more people in it than that. So what possibly could have happened here? Well, now, this is what I think that the situation probably was in Montreal. To fully sign that deal, basically, what, last year? 2021. It's now 2022. Signed a four-year deal at 4.2, which is a sweet number, with the expectation, I'm sure, that he was going to play in Montreal for those four years. You know, like, he wasn't looking to get traded already again when he went to Montreal. Gordon, the, not the general manager, Hughes is the general manager, but let's face it, Gordon is kind of the general manager there in Montreal, <laughs> making the moves that they're doing. I think he realizes that to do this rebuild, they also have to look at team morale. And they also have to look at the fact that on positive, Gordon is on a four-year plan here, like he was with the New York Rangers for this rebuild. So in saying that, you would think, well, wouldn't you just go, you know, because Toffoli didn't have a no-trade clause here. Wouldn't you just give him to the best team that you can get the most money for or most uh, prospects for, most assets for? Um, which, I mean, you can make a good argument for that, but if it's the four-year plan like I think it is, he's going to have to sign some free agents to fill these holes. Uh, you're going to grab guys like this Emil guy, hope he works out, the first-round pick. You want to bang on that. Uh, and, you know, maybe you can win the lottery. They got they have a lot. They had a lot of second-round picks a year before. You got to hit on those. And try to fill in that roster as much as you possibly can, as quickly as you can, which is what he did with the Rangers. And then he signed free agents. Remember that in New York in, with the Rangers? He signed Panarin. Right? He didn't just sit there and wait for the prospects to move up. He started filling in the holes with, with free agents. And I think he's going to have to do that in Montreal. So now, if I'm a free agent, I'm looking at this situation from afar. And free agents do look at th things this way. Free agents, players look at this, these things that teams do. Now, if he were to, if you were to take to Foley and basically say, look, it didn't work out. You don't have a no trade clause, so we're just going to toss you out wherever we can get you. Sorry, buddy. Right? And then Toffoli's like, what? Well, my family and, you know, like, can you not even, like, take me into consideration at all for wanting to come to Montreal or anything like that? And he's like, no, no, we just need to get his money. We need to do what's good for Montreal, sorry. And that's it. And then send him off to wherever he's going to go to. Or you could go, look, where, where would you like to go? And we just talked about how there was 10 guys on that team that he used to play with. Lucic played in L.A. Uh, in Vancouver, they got a whole bunch of Vancouver. Christopher Tana, Markstrom, you know, 
He played with a lot of guys on this team. So he, he's familiar with them. Not to mention he played in Vancouver. So it's Calgary's pretty close to Vancouver. I'm sure he's got ties there, uh, all of those things. So he probably would have said, you know, if he can swing it, I'd really like to go to Calgary. And you call up some places like, the, you know, you call up all the teams and you try to work out the deal. Colorado probably figures out or L.A. or New York Rangers or Philadelphia. Over time, just start to realize that they're probably not going to get them. So they're really just building up the pot as much as they can. Calgary also gets the idea that, you know what, I think they're trying to do what's best for Tyler Toffoli here. So we're not going to give up too, too much but we will make it somewhat of a fair deal so we can make this trade. And that's what I think happened here. Um, again, with it's an unsigned... Uh, I want to go back to the fact that Emil Heinemann is unsigned. It's not very... He's been doing pretty well in the Swedish Elite League. Why is he unsigned? Is it possible he wasn't like didn't want to sign for Calgary for whatever reason? Maybe because they have plenty of depth on the wing, right? We just looked at Calgary's. Look at all the depth they have on the wing. Where is a guy like Heineman going to fit? Dylan Dubé, you're going to have to trade him away. Uh, Manjapan, he's not going anywhere. Uh, we don't think Johnny Goudreau is going anywhere, although I talked to Calgary Flames fans, and they seem to think that they're not going to be able to sign him. That's another story in itself, but if you're Heinemann, you're looking at this roster going, I don't think I fit in here. I don't think I want to sign here because uh, the, for the future, I want to be a second-line winger, and I'm sure he does. I don't know if yeah, he has the capabilities of doing that. It doesn't look like it's going to happen here. Now, he gets traded to Montreal. You look at, we know they're going to be going through a, a deep rebuild, not a deep, but a, a rebuild here. And they're going to be wanting them to come over and saying, look, we're going to have a spot for you probably, right? So more likely he's going to sign in Montreal. But why I say all this is Calgary didn't have much leverage on this player. But they, but Montreal ends up taking the player anyways. The late first round pick, it's usually about maybe 30 to 40% on those late picks, 30%, something like that. I, didn't, I don't even think it's that high that they even hit as an NHL player and a fifth round pick and Pitlick was a throw in for a guy that can was on a 40 goal pace two years ago. But I get it. Going back to Montreal now, like I said, when they have to sign free agents, players look at that and go, do I want to sign in Montreal? Do I really want to sign in Montreal? Uh, they signed to fully to a four-year deal. Uh, let's say they decided to just throw it out. Just throw it out and go, you know, oh, we don't care. It doesn't matter that you are, uh, you know, you have a no-trade clause. We're going to trade you to wherever you want to go, wherever we want to take you so we can get as many assets as we possibly can, okay? If you're a player and you want to sign – with Montreal or Montreal is calling your agent and they're trying to fill holes three, four years down the road after they get as many prospects as they can to make this team a possible contender. I've got this in my back of my mind going, ah, look what they did to Toffoli. How do I know they're not going to do that to me? Well, one thing for sure, I want a no trade clause in my contract after what you did to that. And that takes the value away from the player as soon as you do that for that, for that very reason. Secondly, Montreal already has a difficult time getting free agents because they have a very high tax system there and uh, for income tax. A lot of, it's, it's tough for, their, for them to, they usually have to overpay to get people to come roll, get, go to Montreal unless they're from Quebec and all of those sort of things like that. So, oh, by the way, when you hear about them drafting players from Quebec and all that, it's not like a, you know, like they don't like English-speaking players or anything like that. It's to do with the fact that Montreal 
people from Montreal and Quebec. It's like a religion, the Montreal Canadiens, and they'll take the financial loss to play for them. So that's more to do with why they do it than not. So it makes it a little more difficult. And if you don't treat players well on their way out in these situations, it gets around the league, and they that may, makes it tougher. There's one more reason, too. If you're going to rebuild, you're going to be bringing young players in. These young players are going to have to be signed, right? So if you mistreat a guy like Toffoli or other players that are out there, when it comes to signing these players, and remember Hughes was an agent, right? Hughes, the general manager, the general manager titled person in Montreal, was an agent. I wouldn't doubt that he himself is talking to Gordon saying, you know, as an agent, I would advise you to really make sure you're taking care of players in these situations. Because if I'm going to be working on contracts, which is what Hughes is going to be doing there, almost for sure, an agent, well, who better to work on contracts? I want to be able to go to guys and say, look, Montreal is obviously willing to take care of you. And if I got a guy coming to me saying, I don't know, they don't really take care of their players all that well. I don't know if I want to sign here. Right? Maybe we can drop a million, million and a half on contracts if they feel like they are valued. And if you treat Toffoli like you, they could have treated Toffoli and just waited for the best assets they could get or the most assets they can and threw them out the door, the next time they go to talk to that prospect or whatever, they're going to say, mm, no, nah, I'm not taking a cut, no way. See, there's a lot more to a trade than the actual thing. There is a whole a myriad of things that happen in a trade that can affect the team for contracts, for future free agents, all of that stuff like that. At least I believe so. Tell me what you think. I wanted to put this out there. That's my full 42, everybody. Uh, NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. I do it from usually from 3.30 to 5.30, three days a week during the week. Sub yourself up. Uh, and be part of the frolic. Have a great day. Take care.